Hey, it's Mr. Shrum again, and I am back with another tutorial. So today we're going to look at factors that affect biodiversity. We're going to use evidence to explain how a change affects biodiversity of an ecosystem. So let's get into the warm up. So what do you think biodiversity means? So if you break that down, bio and diverse. And why do you think stability depends on biodiversity? Do you think it's important? Um, I'll show you the sample answer. Biodiversity refers to the variety of species in an ecosystem. So how diverse is the biological life in an ecosystem? For the most part, ecosystems with high biodiversity are more likely to survive environmental changes. Therefore, biodiversity is important to ecosystem stability. Many countries have laws that regulate hunting, including restricting hunting to specific times of year. Why is this hunting restriction important for preserving certain animal populations? And in the sample answer, animal populations can change from one season to another. So it's important to restrict hunting to seasons when the population is high. Such a restriction helps prevent a severe drop in population, which could actually threaten the species. So it's important to limit hunting during breeding seasons to increase the possibility of offspring reaching adulthood. There's the intro video and we'll get into biodiversity. So we know that ecosystems are very complex and these systems have species that are dependent on one another in complex ways. Biodiversity refers to the different species of plants and animals that are part of an ecosystem. The level of biodiversity in an ecosystem can be an important predictor of stability. So let's take a closer look at the components of biodiversity. There is genetic diversity, and that refers to how much the genes in a species uh, vary. Individuals of a species possess a high variety of alleles. And if you click on that, that's an alternate alternate form of a specific gene. So they can have one gene, but it may show up in different ways. And that turns into different traits. High genetic variation is critical in adapting to a changing environment. So for example, some individuals might possess alleles that are resistant to a particular disease. Individuals who don't have these alleles may actually suffer or die from the disease. This process called natural selection allows organisms with favorable traits to survive and reproduce. Okay, those who are more adaptable and they can change their routine, they will be the ones that move on and reproduce. Interbreeding populations are groups of organisms of one population that mate with organisms of a different population to reproduce. These organisms typically belong to the same species, but sometimes organisms of different species may interbreed. These populations are more likely to have beneficial traits that help them cope with a changing environment. Therefore, ecosystems with interbreeding populations have greater stability. Okay, 
Because if you're breeding between species or different populations, there's more variety in their offspring. The next type of diversity is ecosystem diversity. Ecosystem diversity refers to the variability among ecosystems in a particular geographical area. Various ecosystems in an area increase the chances of interbreeding, which in turn increases genetic diversity. So if you have different ecosystems and then species in those ecosystems uh, mate with those from another ecosystem in the same area, they have more genetic diversity and their offspring will be better suited to either ecosystem. Species diversity. Now that's the most basic and natural state of biodiversity. It refers to the variety of species that live in any given area. And for ecosystem stability, it's necessary to have an even mix of producers, consumers, and decomposers. If you remember how we categorized um, species. Producers produce the nutrients from, they, they collect it from the sun, then they produce um, energy, and then the consumers consume producers in some form or another. And then when consumers uh, or producers die, decomposers come in to uh, release the energy back to where the uh, producers got the energy. And it's all a cycle. You see how they all depend on each other. And the more diverse that uh, the species are, there is a higher stability for an ecosystem. That ecosystem can thrive more often than not. So a highly diverse or high, highly biodiverse ecosystem, a change in one population may not have a large effect on the ecosystem as a whole. So if it's more diverse, it's, it's more self-sustaining. But on the other hand, uh, consider a small ecosystem with just one producer, one first level consumer, and one second level consumer. A change to any one of those species will have a dramatic effect on the entire ecosystem. Okay. An ecosystem contains some species that are disproportionately important to its function. The ecosystem stability depends on these keystone species. Keystone uh, means really important, key. They are the key in some of these ecosystems. And the extinction, extinction, extinction of a keystone species would cause a domino effect. It would either change the entire ecosystem or result in the death of other species. Many times the keystone species are the predators that help control populations of other species. So in the Sonoran Desert, hummingbirds are the keystone species. They uh, are the ones that pollinate native plants and prevent invasive species of plants from growing. So in that environment, hummingbirds are actually very, very important. All right, so we're given, let's, let's try to look at this unanswered. Okay, we have these tiles and we need to pair them correctly with the uh, words and their definitions, we need to pair them. So genetic diversity, which one of these looks most like genetic diversity? Let's 
sea otters eat sea urchins, preventing urchin overpopulation. That sounds like a keystone species to me. So, okay. Now, genetic diversity, why a population of a spider species has a wide variance in individual traits. So that means um, a population of a certain spider species has a lot of different individual traits within the species. And those individual traits, anytime you see traits, think of genes, genetics, okay? That's what diverse genetic um, a diverse genetic population would be. Keystone species, that is a very important species that keeps the ecosystem in check in some way. And these sea otters prevent urchins from overpopulating. So that is a keystone species. Species diversity, in the Amazon, they found 100 different types of ants living in one tree. So that's a diverse species because 100 different types of the same species is, yeah, species diversity. And then ecosystem diversity. We have three populations of insects from neighboring regions and they're able to interbreed. So ecosystem diversity, that's like the biggest picture where populations from different regions can interbreed. That's an entire ecosystem diversity. Genetic, individual, small scale species, slightly bigger scale, the species are diverse. And then even bigger scale, ecosystems are diverse. Uh, let's get into the benefits again of biodiversity. So we can see how biodiversity is beneficial and important for ecosystems because humans benefit from abundant natural resources. We need to conserve biodiversity and benefits are classified based on their use. So direct benefits, humans depend on many organisms to live, for example, supply food, lumber and natural medicines. Many of the plants we eat have little genetic diversity. For instance, most bananas are clones, identical genetic copies of each other. As a result, bananas may become susceptible to diseases. We need to preserve a wide variety of genes and species of banana to improve the traits of the existing species. Biodiversity will also improve the traits of other natural species on which we depend both directly and indirectly. I am actually gonna show you what a wild banana looks like <laughs> as an aside to this. Um, but a wild banana actually looks a lot different than the ones you find in stores. They actually have um, more these, these seeds in them. And you actually uh, genetically breed them out. And um, before the banana, the banana we know today, it actually was a different type of banana altogether. And that's why um, having biodiversity is an important thing because we actually lost a banana species, if you can believe it. Okay, so back to this. So we talked about direct benefits and now we have indirect benefits Biodiversity creates a natural, healthy environment. Plants take in carbon dioxide 
and release oxygen during photosynthesis. During cellular respiration, they emit carbon dioxide. However, the amount they emit is less than the amount they consume. So plants are crucial in reducing the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is a major factor in climate change. A healthy ecosystem provides humans with other benefits too. We need water to survive. Watersheds are the source of much of the water we consume. These are basin-like areas that collect and carry water to large bodies of water. So think of uh, rivers, lakes, or oceans after rainfall or when snow melts. And to ensure a supply of clean and safe water, humans need to maintain clean and healthy ecosystems. Okay. So in this question, it wants you to name an animal that both directly and indirectly benefits humans. Can you think of anything? Our sample answer is the honeybees. They both directly and indirectly benefit humans. Directly, um, some humans uh, eat honey and we also depend on them to pollinate crops. Bees also pollinate other plants that provide several indirect benefits to humans. These benefits include reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and providing food for the herbivores on which we depend. So it's, they're part of the system, as are we. And I think we'll pick this up next time, okay? But I'll leave you here and I hope that was helpful and I will see you in the next meeting, okay? See you later.